Are you having trouble trying to figure out the best strategy to convert your sphere of influence, your friends and family, people that already know you? I've got the solution. What's up everybody, Ricky Carruth here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanna to get into how to convert your sphere of influence. Your friends and family, and it may not even be friends and family, it may just be a group of people from a previous business you're in. Maybe you're in a different industry before, like let's say for example, you're in the mortgage business and now you're in the real estate business, or vice versa. Or maybe you know you're talking about your college roommates and or your 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 high school graduation class. Or maybe you used to be a golf pro and you have uh, tons of people uh, golfers. You have a, a list of uh, uh, tons of golfers who know who you are because you're a golf pro. Whatever the case may be, it's people that you have access to that are basically a sphere of influence for yourself and you wanna learn how to convert these people in your new business, which it may be real estate or it may be in the mortgage industry or who knows, any kind of sales business that you're trying to convert your friends and family or some group of people that you know or have access to, we're fixing to get into the details of how we're gonna do that. Before we get into that, I'm Ricky Carruth. If you're new here, welcome. If you have any questions or any videos you would like me to make, just shoot me a comment below and I'll be sure to get on it. So as we're moving into our new career, whatever that may be, it could be a real estate agent, like I say, mortgage broker, any kind of sales business or business in general that you want to start converting your sphere of influence, people you already know or people who know you and you just want to figure out what the best way to approach these people without being salesy. See, that's the thing, isn't it? You don't wanna come across salesy or feel like you're high pressuring or putting people in an awkward situation. You wanna figure out how to effectively get those people to, to want to do business with you in your new career without feeling like you're putting them in an awkward situation. The first thing I would say about converting your sphere of influence is be confident in yourself that you are there to help them. Okay, and you're not there to try to have pressure sell them and you're not concerned with just trying to get them to do business with you, that you literally want to help them through your business. Okay, have super high confidence that you are there to help and to use your business for in a positive way to help them and that will give you the confidence you need to start approaching these people. The second thing I would say is, is what contact information do we have? Okay, do we have their phone number? Do we have their email address? Are we friends on Facebook and all the different social media platforms? Where do we have the contacts? You know, what exact avenues can we take to approach these people? I would say a big thing is, is email. We want the email. So if we have the phone numbers, but not the email, we want to call them and get their email. If we have their email, great. Well, email is king. What we're going to do with that email is we're going to put them in a database and we're going to start email marketing to them in a low pressure way. And we're just going to try to provide value through the email. I like to do every week. Every, every week on the same day of the week, forever, it shows consistency, hard work, dependability, professionalism, all the qualities that people want in a salesperson or whatever kind of business that you're doing. They want to feel that. They want to know that you're there, you're working for them. Even if they're not ready yet, they know that at any moment that they do become ready, you're going to be their guy or girl. Okay, so now for the conversation. What are we going to say to them? How are we going to approach them verbally? Okay, what is the conversation? What is, this, what is the script? What are we going to say to, to really make them feel comfortable with us enough for us to pitch our new business or career with them? Okay, the next thing you guys need to do in order to start converting your sphere of influence better is go ahead and give me a like and a comment so I know this video is helping you. I would say the first thing about a conversation with a sphere of influence is don't go into the conversation thinking it, that it's a sales pitch. Okay, I want you to enter the conversation just as normal as you could. Seeing how they've been, catching up, uh, talking about old times, whatever the case may be. Then at some point in the conversation when we feel the time is appropriate and it may not come, you may not nail them down on that call. Maybe it's the next call. It depends on how the conversation goes. And this is something I really want you to get. You do not have to try to pitch them on that first call. 
Okay, it could be the next call. This is your sphere of influence. You do know this person. They do know you. This isn't the last time you're ever going to talk to them. So kind of fill them out. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to go in there. If we feel like the opportunity is there, we're going to tell them, hey, we're in this new business. We, we've started this new career, and I didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you. Like, for example, if you're a real estate agent, you could say, hey, I just want to let you know I got in real estate. And uh, I didn't know if there's anything I could do for you there. If you're a car salesman, you just got in the car sales business, you know, hey, I'm working down here at the, at the car dealership. I didn't know if there's anything I could do for you in that regard. If you're a mortgage broker, hey, I just got in the mortgage business. I didn't know if there's anything I could do to help you there. And if you notice my tone, how I'm saying it, you know, rewind this video a little bit and listen to my tone as I'm saying this, you really want to get that what I call F-E going on when we're talking to these people because you want them to feel like they're friend or family. Okay, and it's funny because sphere of influence basically is friend or family. So you want them to feel like your friend or family. So what you don't want to do is cross over that line from it being a friend or family type conversation and tonality, speed of voice, nervousness, calmness, all that stuff. You don't want to cross over to from that to a salesy, salesman, high pressure, awkward situation. You want to keep it into the FE zone. Now when you ask the question if there's anything in the world you can do for them there or regarding that or whatever the case may be, now we're really going to be listening for the answer. Okay, This is going to be our moment. This is the key to everything is whatever the answer to that question is and that kind of tells us what direction to go from here. Our entire objective during this call is this. We want to find out if they have a relationship with another person in our business other than us, if there's another relationship that they trust that they use for that same exact industry already. Is there another relationship in place? Do they know another mortgage broker? Do they, do they know another real estate agent? Do they have a car salesman that they really trust and, and buy all their cars from? That's the real objective here is to find out is a relationship already in place in that industry for this person or is the door open for us to come in and begin that relationship as their salesperson or business in that industry? So think about the conversation so far. We're just going to see how they're doing. We're going to we're going to just talk to them, you know, old times and all this stuff. Then we're going to say, hey, well, look, I got in the real estate business. I didn't know if there's anything I could do for you in that regard. Okay, then yay or nay, you might talk about stuff or whatever. And if they say no, there's nothing you can do, say, okay, cool, is there an agent that you would work with if you were to do something? Or if you're a car salesman, I got you, well, is, there, is there a car dealership or car salesman in the area that you would work with if you were to buy or sell a car? So on and so forth, through the different industries. If they say yes, they are looking to do something and they start telling you the details, I'm looking for this kind of house or that kind of car, or I'm looking to refinance my house or whatever the case may be, we're gonna listen to those details, we're gonna start answering questions and talking to them about it, but we still want to establish, is there another salesperson in the industry that they're gonna work with? We want to ask them that, even if they say they're, they're moving towards something, we want to establish that we are going to be their salesperson for this deal. And from there, we just follow the yellow brick road. We just keep helping, keep asking, keep talking, and keep moving towards helping them accomplish what they want to accomplish. Okay, so the next question that we're going to ask when we get to this point, if they do want to do something or they are thinking about doing something, is we want to know why. Why are they thinking about buying a new car? Why are they thinking about buying a new house? Why are they thinking about refinancing? Whatever the case may be, whatever industry you're, you're in, you want to find out why they're making this decision to do this. This is going to further establish you as the person that they're going to use for this transaction and you're going to go deeper with the relationship and that's what you want. You want the relationship long term. Then you start getting referrals, repeat business and referrals of referrals. Now, if they don't want to do anything or they're not thinking about doing anything right now or whatever the case may be, and we ask them if they have a salesperson that they would use if they were to do something, okay, and they don't, or even if they do, okay, we want to say, look, I'd love the opportunity to stay in touch with you, you know, for maybe in the future when you do decide you might want to do something, would it be okay if I stayed in touch? What's your email address? And you want to get that email address every single time. And the sphere of influence, your sphere of influence are going to give you that email address. Hopefully you already have their email address. But if you don't, 
you really want to make sure that you get it because email is king. You do the weekly email every week on the same day of the week forever. You take their email address and you do Facebook, Instagram, and Google ads. Now you're everywhere. They see you everywhere and they can't help but to choose you when they decide to do a deal. So let's recap real quick. I covered a lot of stuff in this video. You might want to go back and watch it again. But we want to make sure we know what contact information we have. We want to definitely go for the email address if we don't have it. Uh, when, we're, when we're having the conversations, we want to be very calm, cool, and collected. We want to have that FE. We want to have that friend or family effect. We want to make them feel comfortable. We want to tell them that we're in this new industry and we're just trying to help them. Okay, we want to establish if they already have a go-to person in that industry. All right, and then we want to find out why they're thinking about doing whatever it is they want to do. Okay, and from there, we're going to let the weekly email and all the other ads kind of take over. We'll check in with them from time to time. And if you do this with your sphere of influence or any group that you have access to, you are going to crush it. And of course, this is only one avenue of the very many avenues you need to have going at all times. Okay, you don't need to solely depend on your sphere of influence to grow your business. This is just one avenue of many that you need to have working, but this is a very important one. So I wanted to cover it in this video. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. I answer all the comments under these videos and every DM on Instagram at Ricky Carew. So hit me up there. Let me know what videos you want me to make next. We'll talk to you soon.